Welcome to all of you who are here in person and all of you who are worshiping at home. We want to say welcome to everyone. A few announcements this morning. Um, oh, by the way, my name is Jennifer Dyer. I'm the Director of Youth and Young Adults here at Montrose Zion. First announcement is Christmas is right around the corner. We are not changing the date of Christmas this year. With all the everything else that has changed, we are still having Christmas same time in December this year. So with that being said, we need to start thinking about poinsettias. So there are order forms out on the window um, of the office as you leave this way. You can pick up an order form, fill that out, and bring it back in. Um, they are $15 each, and all proceeds go to missions here at the church. So go ahead and get that done this week so you don't have to worry about it or forget about it. If you're at home and you want to order a poinsettia, just email us and we'll, we'll work that out for you. My second announcement is we are starting an adult Sunday, kind of a Sunday study. Um, we are going to be, Sue Kroll is going to be leading an online study of Adam Hamilton's book, Incarnation. The study will start the first Sunday in Advent at 10 a.m. If you're interested, this will be over Zoom. So if you're interested in joining this study, email the church and we'll get you on the list and then we'll send you a link closer to the start of the study uh, for that. So if you're interested in that. Today is the last day to drop off your Operation Christmas Child boxes here at the church. Um, collection week is all this week, but this is the last day that we're gonna be able to take it because we're here on Sunday. It'll be over by the time next Sunday rolls around. So if you have your Operation Christmas Child boxes, make sure you drop them off at the bench. Um, we will be here until about noon, so if you forgot them, we'll be here till noon. Or if you're at home, there's lots of places to drop them off around the community, or you can come to the church before noon today to drop them off. We have had a tradition of having an interfaith service with our um, Jewish friends at Temple Bethel. And we are going to have that in some format again this year. We just want to keep that into the front of your mind. We're not sure if it's going to be live streamed or a recorded service. So we'll get you the more details on that when we have those firm in place. But I just wanted to make an announcement that that is happening so that you are aware that that's coming up. Uh, I think that is my last announcement. All right, let's continue with our worship with singing our first hymn, and please stand if you're able. Hymn number 399, Take My Life and Let It Be.
Our first scripture reading this morning comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another, build up each other, as indeed you are doing. As we come into this time of prayers, of joys and concerns, um, I just want to take a moment to honor any of the veterans. If there's any veterans among us, if you could please stand at this time. And those who are at home, we want to say thank you so much for your service. Let us go into a time of prayer. God of our kind, God our kind and loving Father, you no longer call us servants but friends. There is so much you have entrusted to us, even the future of your kingdom of justice and love. Give us the grace to work out with you the growth of mercy and goodness in this world, to be united with all Christians and with all who seek you with a sincere heart in bringing reconciliation and joy to everyone. Wise and patient God, we know that you want us what you want us to do, but we are far too often hesitant to follow through for you. You give us multitude blessings and ask that we develop these gifts and use them to help others. You came to the earth not to be served, but to serve. And so we thank you this morning for those who followed this example and served their country with honor and bravery. They offered their gifts and talents that you gave them to be used in the service of their country. By their example, we are reminded that we all have gifts to give and are called to give them sacrificially and without reservation. We often think of our gifts, our talents, as things that are less than worthy. In this country in which competition is the ruling code, we don't want to compete with others because we we feel we just don't have the right stuff. How blind we are. To each one of us you have given gifts which can be used to help others. Each gift and talent is precious in your sight. Rather than compete with others to, to see who has the greater talent, let us use the gifts we have been given joyfully As we enter into a time of personal prayer, we ask for guidance for where you are calling us to serve. We pray for those who have served and are serving. One of the greatest gifts is the gift of prayer. And we have brought before you, Lord, the concerns which have been weighing on our hearts. Touch the lives of all these people and situations with your healing love. Give each one a sense of your powerful presence. Flood their lives with hope and peace. Each one of us to be workers for you. Help us to trust in your abiding presence and love for us challenge us to use the gifts and to honor the giver. Through Christ we pray all of these things, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As a prayer response, let's sing together. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. Amen. Like I've shared before, um, since we're not passing the offering plates, it doesn't really make sense to have a time of offering in the middle of the service necessarily, but so we're sort of rebranding it to a, haha, ta -da, a moment of gratitude. That was good timing. Thank you. So I, I chose this song um, this morning. It was a new song. I think it's a relatively new song. At least it was new to me in the last month or so. I think um, this moment I want to frame the time of moment of gratitude uh, and just think about in terms of, you know, even when we don't see or, or can't see God at work, we have to know he's there and to be thankful. I guess that's all I'll say. Every time I try to make it on my Every time I try to stand and start to fall And all those lonely roads that I have traveled on There was Jesus When the life I built came crashing to the ground When the friends I had were nowhere to be found I couldn't see it then, but I can see it now. There was Jesus. In the waiting, in the searching, in the healing and the hurting, like a blessing buried in the broken pieces. Every minute, every moment, where I've been and where I'm going Even when I didn't know it or couldn't see it There was Jesus For this man who needs amazing kinds of grace For forgiveness at a price I could not pay well, I'm not perfect, so I thank God every day that there was Jesus. In the waiting, in the searching, in the healing and the hurting, like a blessing buried in the broken pieces. Every minute, every moment, where I've been and where I'm going Even when I didn't know it or could not see it There was Jesus There was Jesus Sing that with me, just this one note There was Jesus on the mountain, in the valleys there was Jesus in the shadows of the alleys. There was Jesus in the fire, in the flood. There was Jesus always in and always was. In the waiting, in the 
searching in the healing and the hurting like a blessing buried in the broken pieces every minute every moment where i've been and where i'm going even when i didn't know it or could not see it there was jesus on the mountain in the valleys there was jesus there was jesus would you sing the doxology with me praise god from whom all blessings flow Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Let's sing it one more time. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Young people, this is your time. This is your children's moment, so make sure you're paying attention. Paying attention. I want to ask you, how many people out there um, have a special talent? Do you all think that you all have a special talent um, that you're going to share with the world? Can you think of something in which you're specially talented at doing? If we could flash forward, then there we go. Perfect. Does anybody think of their special talent? When I was a little kid, my special talent was that I could take my thumb and I could bend it completely backwards until it touched my wrist. It doesn't bend that far anymore. Um, and it actually hurts every time I try to do that now. But when I had that special talent, and any time I'd meet somebody new, I'd want to show them what my special talent was. I'd say, hey, do you want to see what I can do? And of course their answer was, well, yeah, of course. I want to see your special talent. You see, when you share your special talent, suddenly the joy that you had begins to grow in the world. And so, Tenley or Tobin, do you, guys, do you have a special talent that you like to do? Yep, Tobin. You have to say it real loud. Hula hoop. You can hula hoop for hours. Now that is amazing. That's awesome, awesome, awesome. Does anybody else have any special talents? Very good. We all have special talents that we can share. Now what I want you to do is I've got God's box of special talents here. And so I'm going to open it up, and I want you to think, think a little bit about if you would like to have this talent. How about this one? Mackie, it says intellectual gifts. It says you're very smart in school. Now, how many out there would like to have that special talent to go with them into the world? I would like to have some of those extra special smarts. And so I use those smarts. This next one is athletic power. God has given you the power to hit a home run. Allie, has God given you that power? You're on your way, right? You're on your way. You're on your way. Good. It's a special thing to be able to have an athletic talent. Here's one that reminds me of our uh, music minister and our organist, musical talent. It says, rock that piano, rock that organ, and sing like a rock star. Who is that kind of talent that they have that boldness that they're able to sing out real loud? Anybody here is really ready to sing out real loud? Joe is, I know. 
But the thing is, man, I would love to have that kind of voice where I sang, and people turn and they say, my gosh, that's beautiful. Now I sing, and they turn and say, what is that sound? So I would love to have good special talent like that. How about this one? Artistic skills. God has given you the power to go create something amazing. Mackie, that's your special talent? That's one of your special talents? That's awesome. That's awesome. I love it. And I've got one more special talent in here. It says, dance like no one is watching. Is anybody out there a dancer? Bev, you're a dancer? That's fantastic. It's, it's a special talent for sweet dance moves. Now, Jesus was telling a parable a long time ago about special talents, and he talks about the master, and really what he was talking about was God, and he talks about the servants in that parable, and really that's all of us. And the, the master gives special talents to each of the servants, and he goes away for a while, and he wants to see how the, the, the servants have done with the talents and two of the servants, they went and they shared their talents with the world. And when they did, suddenly they multiplied and they got bigger. Now one servant was a little bit shy about his talents and he wanted to protect them. He wanted to keep them to himself. So he held on to that talent. And when he came back, when he came back and the master checked with them, he said, how would you do with that talent? Well, the servant said, well, I've got it right here. I haven't done anything with it. And Jesus says, my gosh. When God gives you all these talents, you're not supposed to just leave them stuck, hidden away in the box that you got to begin with. You've got to share those talents with the world. And when we share our talents in Jesus' name, God's kingdom grows and God's love grows within all of us and out there too. And so what I want you to think about is that if God gives you athletic power to go hit and home run, it's not just about you. But go hit a home run with your life in a way in which brings people together as a team. If God has given you the gift to dance, then go and dance in a way that causes other people to want to join in that dance. Because there is a whole lot of love that we need to build in this world. And if God has written a song within your heart, then my gosh, you need to share it with the world. Because the world needs to hear that beautiful sound again. So whatever talent that God has given you, Make sure you use it. Don't waste it. Don't hide it away in a box. Don't keep it inside because you're afraid to share it with others. But just like the way I used to share my, my thumb and what I could do with my thumb, share it with everybody that you meet. And suddenly God's kingdom grows and the love of Christ grows. Let's go to prayer. Dear God, you've given us so many talents. Let us not be shy. Let us not hide your talents away, but let us share them with the world in a way that grows your love. Amen. Great. If our young people would like to go off to Children's Church, um, Mrs. Saris is going to take them back to, to my wife, I think, at this moment. So, awesome. Our second scripture reading this morning is this, the parable of the talents. It's from Matthew 25, verses 14 through 28. For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. The one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. 
You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. The ma- but his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was mine with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten talents. There we go. Very good. Excellent. Um, I was doing a children's sermon um, years ago, and I was going through with the young people and sharing with them all of our special toys that we have in life. And I talked to them a little bit about a doll that I would sleep with every single night at my house. It was a little elephant, and I loved it so much that the thing really looked pretty well worn and pretty beaten up. And so I talked about those special things that we have, and all the young people would talk about their special dolls that they slept with. And I mentioned to them, I was like, wouldn't it be great if you shared that special toy with a brother or a sister? That way that their brother or sister would be able to see the great love and the great joy that you have found within that um, toy as well. Or we talked about the bicycles that we would ride. It's like, you know, wouldn't it be great to let your friend have a ride on your bike so they could see how fast that bicycle was? So along the way, I was moving to the point of the children's sermon that we get so much more joy out of our toys when we share them with somebody else. So that way, it's not just me getting joy out of it, but it's also others will find the joy in it also. And of course, one of the little boys in the children's sermon smiled at me with a big beaming smile on his face. He said, Reverend Liming, I don't share my toy with anyone. And I kind of get where he's coming from. You see, when you find that one precious thing in life, you want to keep it safe. You want to make sure it doesn't get broken. I mean, if I shared my little elephant doll with somebody, I had took the risk that perhaps somebody wouldn't give it back, that they loved it so much they'd keep it for themselves. Or perhaps if I let somebody ride my bike, they might break the chain or they may adjust the seat in a way that I just don't like. But life is about taking the stuff that we have and putting it out there in the world. And we take a risk with it as we do. Now Jesus was telling a parable about the talents in which a master gives a certain amount of talents to each of his servants and then goes away. As we know from the parable, the two of the servants went and they invested the talents in the world until when the master came back, they had doubled what he had given them. But one of the servants, being very careful with the talent that the master had given him, wanted to protect it for all it's worth. So he took the one coin and he held it preciously in his hand. He protected it as if it was the last thing that he did. And when the master returned, the master asked, How have you done with the talent that I've given you? Well, the servant turned around, he opened up his hand, he beamed proudly, he said, Here it is, that talent you've given me. Nothing has changed with it. It's no different than it was before. Nothing had grown, nothing had been risked, and ultimately, nothing had been gained. You see, the talents that we have are ultimately the life that God has given us in this world. And we only have one life to live. And so the question is, how will we use the life that God has given us? There are no second chances. There are no rewinds. There are no redos in life. And ultimately, God has given us everything that we have. All of the gifts, all of the talents, our families, our friends. Everything we can claim is ours ultimately first comes from the gift that comes from God. So how are we doing with the gift that we've been given? Are we using the lives that we've been given so that others might live? Are we using the talents and gifts that God's given us so that others will know God's love? Friends, I'm not much of a risk taker. I've never played a single hand of poker um, when it had anything to do with money. You see, I would be the first person that any good poker player would want at the table because they would take all my money by the end of the night. I don't know how to play, and I don't really like to risk. And so generally, I keep my money where it's safe. 
But this parable about, a parable about taking risks in life isn't encouraging us to go and spend our life savings in Las Vegas. And also in this day of communicable diseases, God also doesn't want us to be foolish with the life we've been given and simply destroy this gift of life that God has given to each of us. And if, if my help causes somebody else harm because I've made them sick by going to help them, well then how in the world does that truly help? And so these days that we're living in, they truly are complicated. But this I know. The life that we've been given isn't just about playing it safe. And so if God is writing poetry in your heart, then it would be selfish to keep that poetry to yourself. If you happen to be vulnerable to getting the coronavirus, well, friends, there are so many ways in which we can take risks with our faith without making ourselves sick or making the world sick around us. Call someone who's lonely. Write them a letter. In this world of political ugliness, be something different. Instead, be a kind of person who brings people together through the words that we speak. And all along, the gifts that we have are, it's all about taking risks with the life we've been given for the sake of those who will benefit. So this past week, Sue Kroll has been asking me, she's like, Bill, I've been thinking about starting an online um, study. And Sue is taking a risk with her life in a responsible way in which she doesn't have to put herself at risk from getting sick, and nobody else will either. But she's putting her faith out there in order to start this class. And so I truly do encourage you to check out her Advent study if, uh, if you'd like to. Now years ago I asked the church um, youth group to help join me in going throughout the neighborhood to collect um, canned goods for a food drive that we were doing. We'd go throughout the neighborhood and we would collect all the stuff that we had gotten, gather it back at the church, check the expiration date, and then take it on to the, to the food pantry afterwards. Um, throughout that time period, we would go out, and for many people, just simply leaving the, the doors of the church was a great big of a risk that they were anxious about taking. For others who went with us, going up to their neighbors' homes and knocking on their door, too, felt risky. risky. It felt unthinkable. It was scary. Some people might tell you no, they don't want to give you anything. Other people may not answer the door, still others would perhaps answer the door, but say that they give to their church, and if they said that, man, that's awesome. That just simply means that they're a partner in the community, and the, the, the mission of feeding hungry people was getting even bigger. But when you knocked on the doors, every now and then, somebody would say yes, and say, yes, I'm glad you came today, because I do, I'm concerned about people who are hungry, and I want to have some way to help them. And in that way, more than just simply collecting the food, by sharing the love of Christ, by taking the risk with the love of Christ, we multiplied the kingdom. That ultimately was what we were trying to do that day. Do you have any idea how many doors that God knocks on throughout the day? There are doors in which people say no to God for a variety of legitimate and probably not so legitimate reasons. But God is not discouraged. He simply moves on to the next door and to the next one until finally he finds a door that opens and somebody says, yes, Lord. I will go. I will use the talents that you have given me out in the world, but, but I'm not going to go alone, and I'm going to need you to come with me. And friends, God comes with us, and the love of Jesus Christ, it multiplies. There was a teacher who was employed by the United Methodist Church, and she served in the country of the Sudan. Um, that's the same country where Joel Gerberich is right now serving as a missionary. And the time period that I'm referring to is a time period in the nation's history that was just following a genocide. The teacher worked in a little one-room schoolhouse where, built by United Methodist Hands, um, just outside of a refugee camp in the region called Darfur. The teacher worked there, and every single day was a day that was packed full of risk. You see, the, the country was still in a tenuous time period. War was about to spark off at any time. And uh, the students that she was teaching, she didn't just teach little boys, but she also taught girls. And there were cultural norms in that area that said the girls didn't belong in school. But that teacher made the decision to take that risk to say, if there's going to be opportunity, there's going to be opportunity for everyone. Now, all the children in her classes were dealing with profound tragedy and loss. These were children of war and children of genocide, and there weren't too many parents alive there. Now, one little boy, a four-year-old, would show up to class every day. His grandmother had watched over him. He had lost his father, who was killed in the genocide, as the family were uh, fleeing for their lives. There we go. 
His dad had stayed behind in the town where they lived to slow down the militias that were moving across the countryside. And quite literally, the father had given his life so that his family had time to run for theirs. The little boy's mother made it through several months of time doing the best she could to feed her children until at last she too succumbed to the starvation, to a lack of food. And the only person the little boy had left was his grandmother. And his grandmother cared for him for several months, making sure he got to school every day. And then lo and behold, when life couldn't get more difficult, grandma got malaria. He would bring her water, he would bring, he would wipe her forehead, and then she too succumbed to her weakness. And then just a few months of time, this little four-year-old boy had lost everybody he knew in his family. Now the teacher would arrive every day at school to the classroom, to a children, classroom full of children who had similar stories. The students would not smile knowing that they were safe in that school, knowing that they would have something to eat before they went home. But that four-year-old boy, he stopped coming to class. And for days, his place at his desk just sat empty. Now the teacher felt exhausted. She was giving everything every single day, almost every waking hour to, to help care for these children. She didn't think she could put herself out there any further. But every time that she went to bed that night, she would go to bed thinking about that empty desk and it, it kept haunting her. It wouldn't leave her alone. Until the next day, at the end of the school day, she went to the refugee camp and she inquired about this child. She went to the area where he'd been staying and then some people said they hadn't seen him. She went to the water station and she checked around there and still nobody had seen him. Feeling absolutely discouraged, absolutely exhausted, she went home, started walking home that day and walked past the cemetery where this little boy's family had been laid to rest. She decided to go inside the cemetery and to sit down at their graves and to simply pray to God to ask what to do next. And there at the, 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 the foot of his grandmother's grave was that little boy laying down in the dirt. His feet were, or his, his hands were um, dug, um, were raw and, and dirty from where he'd been digging at the ground. Well, the teacher just sat down beside him for a little while. Um, she touched his back, and after a period of time, he crawled up into her um, lap. Friends, there are moments in life in which we feel like we have nothing left to give. But there is somebody out there that needs whatever is left. And there's days in which we just don't want to risk opening our hearts any further than we possibly could. And that teacher didn't think it was possible for her to open her heart any further until she discovered that she could. And there in that cemetery, in that field of death, that teacher multiplied life. She took the little boy home into her own home. And now it was she who was making sure he showed up to school every day. Friends, the gifts that we've been given in this world, they matter tremendously. The risks that we take with the gifts that we have been given, it matters too. In a world that can feel so jaded, we can be tempted to just not want to care anymore. As Christians, we have to. We've got to take that risk. We have one life that God has given us. There aren't any do-overs. And so friends, let's use this life. Let's use the great talents we've been given. And let's multiply the love of Jesus Christ everywhere we go. Amen. Friends, will you please stand for our closing music?
dear friend, the great God who loves us is showering us all with so many talents. They aren't meant to be kept to alone. They aren't to be meant to be hidden away in the, our faith boxes of life. But rather, set those talents free and unleash them upon the world in the name of Jesus Christ and build the kingdom in Christ's name. Go in peace and may God's richest blessings be with you now and forevermore. Amen.